Hey everyone, Matt Martin here from Smooth River Guiding. I'm sitting down with Chris today from Drift Outfitters and we're going to go over my favorite tube fly for fall steelhead in Ontario. All right, we're going to start our thread uh, just behind where I'm going to eventually place uh, the cone. This fly I do like with a cone head. Won't fish as deep as a lead-eyed intruder. Um, you know, I like to create flies that the fish have to move to. It creates a more aggressive grab, uh, less snags on the bottom of the river. Okay, so I'm gonna stop at the back, leaving about a quarter to a half inch. We can always trim that up after. Um, gonna use some uh, ice dub, just to create a little dubbing ball. A little bit of dubbing wax on there. Place. We're not going to use a ton, just enough. Use whatever colors you like. Um, this is going to be a white and orange uh, intruder, one of my favorite colors. So everything's going to be shades of orange with white veils. Just about a little two inch dubbing needle or so, nothing crazy to start. It's going to build a nice little ball. This is just going to give something for the prop to stand up against. It doesn't need to be big. Um, the next step uh, we're going to do is create a dubbing loop. Um, there's lots of videos out there on how to create a dubbing loop. And they're pretty straightforward once you learn them. Be a little tricky um, when you're learning though. But pull off enough uh, thread, leave about a four inch dubbing loop. So I'm going to go down about four inches from my needle, place the thread right back over top with a couple turns. And then very important that you wrap around those two freestanding pieces of thread in order to close it off and bump your thread forward a couple turns. When you do that, your thread's gonna wanna spin, so you're gonna turn that back to stick your dubbing loop tool in the vise, and usually I want it long enough so my dubbing loop tool can hang and not really spin. Um, the main prop is gonna be Arctic Fox, uh, again in a shade of orange. Um, I'm gonna take off a pretty decent sized clump Great material, like kind of like marabou, but more durable. Um, you get lot, you get uh, left with a lot of guard hairs and a lot of underfur. Um, in this fly, I like to use kind of a mix of both. I'm going to pick out the shortest um, under bit of underfur with my brush, and then I'm going to pick out the longest guard hairs and pull them out of the way, just to create a nice squared off profile on the fly or on the material. So that's my material. I'm going to set that aside for a second, make sure that my dubbing loop's not twisted. If it is, just give it a turn back the other way. Big thing with dubbing loops is use wax. Help keep it in place. Your prop is only going to be about an inch or so. So you're going to lay out your fibers. The nice thing about Arctic Fox is it wants to stick together. So it's easy to work with. You spread it out about an inch. You're going to open up your loop and insert your foxtail and then close the loop. Once that, um, pull that out of the way a little bit, is uh, in, the, in, the, in the dubbing loop, you're gonna wanna spread the material out. What I like to do is pull down on my dubbing loop tool, press my finger along the bottom to try to let it lay out somewhat straight. And you can do one of two things. You can kinda pull down the material with your fingers to space it. It's probably a good way to start space it out to be about a rough uh, two inch or so. And then if you have any little spots where it's a little bit sparse, take your dubbing needle and just massage the individual fibers all through. The thing with these is you want consistency. You don't want there to be like gaps in your uh, loop. It'll make for an uneven fly. So. Once you're at that stage, looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna push on the left side of the dubbing loop, which will cause the material to stand out straight. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna, on the, on the, um, the butt end of the material, I'm gonna cut it pretty short, um, leaving about an eighth of an inch or so material to work with. Great. If you wanna touch up your tips, you can kind of just bump the butts and it'll push the material closer 
to the thread. But you want to leave enough so that when it twists, it actually has something to bite onto. There we go. So I'm going to grab both pieces of thread again and spin up my dubbing loop tool. And then I'm going to slowly release the tension between my thumb and my index finger on my left hand and let it spin. You don't want to let it go too fast. It'll tend to get all tangled up in a mat. And I'm going to do it a couple more spins, make sure it's nice and tight. You can go too tight and break your thread, so don't do that. Take your dubbing brush and just brush it out a little bit. Great. So I'm going to take my thread, bring it back into the picture here. And uh, I'm going to wrap this just in front of the dubbing ball while stroking all of the fibers back after every turn to create that prop we're going to want for the soft uh, ray of feather we're eventually going to use. And we're going to tie off that dubbing loop with a few turns. That's a bit close. I'm a big fan of um, like progressive contrast in my flies. Uh, I think a lot of natural uh, food items have that. So I like to play with different shades throughout my fly. So I'm also going to take a schlappen feather, um, one with like pretty, I mean they all are pretty webby, but a fairly webby one, um, like that probably, uh, but not too long. I don't want it to be longer than the Arctic Fox. I want it to be slightly shorter if anything. And I'm going to pull off all the really webby fibers at the base. And this will just help to create a little bit more contrast on the fly and uh, not much more of a prop, just, I don't know, makes it fishier to me. We're going to tie it in by the butt with the concave of the feather um, facing towards the tube. All the feathers will have a natural kind of twist to them. It'll just help it lay down properly when you start wrapping. And start brushing those fibers back. We're going to do a few turns just in front. There we go. I'm going to tie that off. And I'm going to snip that close. There we go. It's a good prop right there, ready to go for the next step, uh, which is the Rhea feather. The thing with Rhea is it comes in like multiple different lengths throughout the feather, just naturally through the bird living, fibers break off, also through dyeing and bleaching processes, it can make them brittle. So you want to somewhat have your feathers, uh, the individual feathers lined up. So what I like to do is grab my bunch of Rhea and go right to the tips as far as I can, and then pull them out of the way. And now I've got these four right here, for instance, which are all the same length. So yeah, those four right there are all the same length. I'm going to snip them at the base, roughly. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie, uh, we're just going to make sure they're all lined up for one. Cool. And we're going to tie them about, um, in about maybe two inches long. I don't want them to go far back from where, where the hook's going to be, just to stop those nippy fish from missing the fly. But I do want a little bit of length on this fly. It's a little bit of a bigger fly. Spread those out a little bit with your thumb and finger. Just two wraps to secure it. Do the same thing. Pull up. I this one I only got two, but that's okay. And this will save you from wasting Rhea. It's not an inexpensive feather, <clears throat> but it's a good one. We're going to make them the same length as the other ones we've tied in. Two wraps. And we're just going to keep working this around the hook, the, the tube, sorry. And we're getting there. 
the trick with intruders or most um, Skagit styled, you know, uh, uh, very flowy flies is to not overdo it with material. Um, if you put too much ray on, it kind of mats down. Uh, with this, I want to make sure it remains flowy and so the fish can not only see it, but also feel it. Those individual fibers in the water are going to create a bit of a disturbance, which will make it a bit more of a target for the fish. Now we're at this step, everything's looking good off the back. It's nice and even. We're going to trim the butts a little bit right now, not all the way flush, because I'm going to do a little trick here where we're going to clean this up with decrease the amount of thread wraps, pull all the material back, gather it in your fingers and unwrap. So I did, uh, I believe four stations, about two wraps per station. So it should be back eight turns roughly. There we go. And hold it where it is. And then just put one loose wrap, gathering everything, slowly tighten and three more and we're good. Now we can shorten up butts. Great. Okay. And we're gonna add a little bit of flash in there. Can't go wrong. I'm not gonna overdo the flash though either. Keep it pretty sparse. And I usually just kind of put the flash on the left and right side of the fly. Massage it around a little bit. And I want it to be, ooh, I want it to be the same length as the uh, rea. Don't want it to extend past. Ostrich works for this, um, and marabou would also be a decent substitute if you palmered it in. It uh, wouldn't be as durable, but it would definitely catch fish. Great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do uh, is do a few different steps here, tying in some ribbing material. So I got some small uh, silver ribbing, it's actually extra small, just enough um, to counter wrap uh, a hackle that's gonna go in here, just for added durability. Wrap that forward and then pull that out of the way. And we're going to take a pretty small um, grizzly hackle just to add some contrast to the fly. On the inside, I think uh, these flies are almost like a hollow tie, so the more depth you can create within the fly, uh, the better. Uh, I personally like to tie these in from the tip at the back of the fly and work forward. Unlike a woolly bugger, we'll often start at the head and work back and then counter rib, but it would, it would definitely work as well. Wrap that in. Turn the butts. At this point, I'm gonna uh, bring my thread forward a few times, try to create um, a nice level working surface, which it already is pretty close. So I'm just gonna do a few wraps. Great. Uh, then we're going to take some, uh, what do you call it, the flat braid. Um, any, you know, body um, mylar tubing would work if you wrapped it on or even flashaboo, but I like the flat braid. It's super durable. Um, the fish teeth don't bang it up after one fish. Catch a few fish on each fly. I think I've had one of these <clears throat> last year that was like over a dozen fish or something on the one fly before it fell apart, which in Swinging terms is, is pretty dang good. Um, so I'm gonna try and tie this in about the length that I want it to keep that level working surface. It's gonna go under the body on, kind of on the near side of the tube shank. Go forward. <clears throat> and we're gonna wrap this with uh, slightly overwrapping turns. Hopefully I cut enough. Looks like I did. Great. 
weights. So it's a relatively longer, uh, longer tie fly. It's not quick tie, but uh, in my opinion, these flies are, are definitely worth it. Uh, they end up doing pretty well throughout the year. I'm going to start kind of brushing these fibers back. It's not like a schlappen, it's a stiffer hackle, like a dry fly hackle, um, but in a long size, just to create a little bit of contrast in the inside of the fly. And we're doing really sparse wraps. We're wrapping them probably four, three to four millimeters apart on the way up the tube. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do um, a couple ways you can do this. I like to personally do one half hitch if I'm going to use my rotating function on my vise. Um, you can do, if you're going to rib up here six or seven turns, you can do six extra wraps and counter rib in your vise. Your tool will just drop. That totally works, but I like to utilize this. Hopefully it'll be long enough with the tube. There we go. Um, and it allows for a bit better placement. When you bring your wire, uh, first off, you'll see I like running my wire on old bobbins, ones that are maybe worn out at the tip, uh, that are cutting thread. They make a great uh, tool to manage your wire. It's not springing all over the table. It also allows for much finer placement. Um, all right, so we're going to wrap this wire forward uh, while wiggling the bobbin left and right to allow it to kind of find its natural little home in between the hackle fibers to reduce how many we trap. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera or not, but you're kind of pulling them out of the way. Going in between, back over, and you're trying to go over the stem of the hackle as many times as you can just to create the most durable fly possible. You can play with wire colors if you want. I really don't think it has any impact on how this fly fish is. This one matches, but you can go with contrasting colors if you wish. Okay, there we go. So we're through. At this point I'm going to move my bobbin rest out of the way, bobbin holder out of the way, and we're going to tie off the wire. I like to go around it once just to extra security on the wire so it doesn't break as easy. And then you can, with this extra small, you can usually just wiggle it till it snaps. Away we go. All right, so we're beyond the halfway mark now. So the interesting thing about intruders is you pretty much just repeat yourself twice. Um, and then a little bit added on at the end. So we're going to use another little dubbing ball. A little bit of wax first just to help the ice dub stick to the thread. My front... Um, station tends to be a little bit heavier than the rear one, so I'm going to use a little bit more of everything um, to create a natural profile, a little bit heavier as a bait, bait fish is thicker towards its head than it is its tail. So we want that to be replicated in this fly's design. So the dubbing ball is about one and a half to two times the size. Then we're going to pull off that to get started on the dubbing loop. Same thing, about four or five inches, wraps. Great. Box the thread out of the way. Go back to the Arctic Fox. And about one and a half or so times as much Arctic Fox as well. Show those butts and pull off those really extra long guard hairs. Now, if the back or the back prop was about an inch long, I'm going to make this one about an inch and a half. Again, just a little bit longer. Cool. I think I like that.
Okay, just aligning those butts. Make it as streamlined as possible. Spin it right up, lots of spins, and then a slow release again of tension between your index finger and thumb will get it spinning. Run your fingers up the thread will cause it to also spin. Spin it again, same thing. And brush it out. Be very careful when you're brushing it out. It's a good way, good place to break your thread if you go at it a little hard. <clears throat> and we're gonna wrap this forward. Might be cutting it a little close on the tube, but I think it's just perfect. Take a even bigger slap in. And pull off those extra webby little bits. Secure. Might just be a naturally kind of twisted piece of feather. There we go. Trying to pull back all those fibers every twist, multiple times in the twist, or multiple times in the, uh, the wrapping to keep those fibers all facing backwards. And you'll start to see it come to life now when you get that second stage tied in. It creates that nice, almost like a flame kind of color. Progressive, it's pretty nice. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to tie in the Rhea again, same thing as before. Start at the base of the fibers, pull up and then pull back and all the little ones will shoot out of the way. And those little ones aren't garbage, they just work for smaller flies. And then I take the final step is pull the shortest of the short forward again. Not sure how much this actually makes a difference to a fish, but Confidence is everything in this game, swinging. So you want about three quarters the length of the fly, I would say. Doesn't need to be the full length of the fly. Tie those in with two wraps. And here. This is about as big as I tie them. Uh, it's gonna be roughly four inches long by the time it's done. I tie them as small as two inches, about as four inches is, is about as big. Um, there's a fine, there's like maybe a bit better, the larger profile for more aggressive fish, warmer water. Hey, even maybe dirtier water, just a bigger profile. Same goes for any anadromous or patadromous style of fishing. <clears throat> Low water flies and high water flies. But keeping in mind the size of bait fish these fish in, uh, eat in the lake, like smelt and cisco, um, it, it kind of average in that four to six inch range, so this is not too big for a Great Lake steelhead by any means. Maybe one more group, just a couple of feathers even. Not a full amount. All right, so same as before. Trim those pretty short, but not all the way yet. This is where you can kind of fill in your gaps a little bit if you feel like a little bit missing. You can kind of unwrap your eight or 10 turns. There we go. Tighten your bobbin up. And you can kind of massage it to get those fibers all spaced out. One loose wrap all the way around, pull it tight, and then a couple to really secure it in there. Now you've just reduced your thread wraps by like eight, which is nice. 
And then you're going to trim these nice and short. Okay. Just a very sparse marabou, but long flowy fibers. And we're not going overkill with it. Just You want one that's got a nice long fiber about the length of your rea. Tie it in by the tip, just create a little gap in your fibers. But this is an optional step. But for me, it's one that I often do. I'll often do this with like a contrasting color too. If I'm doing like, a, let's say a black and blue or black and pink or something like that, I might use the opposite color to what the rea is. It's gonna do one wrap. And I would usually skip this step if it was um, a smaller, if it was a smaller fly. If it was only two inches long or so, I'm not gonna add the extra marabou as it's probably the right profile as is. There we go. Yeah, I find that'll really add some fullness to the front of the fly. Like that makes it look a lot nicer. Um, more movement, it's less durable than Rhea, but it's again, just an add-on. Then we're gonna go back to a little bit of polar flash. It's down the left and the right side, same length again as the Rhea, not going longer. steps is uh, something that's quite common on a lot of uh, Skagit style flies is some grizzly hackle for horns on a pretty straight feather um, that will will massage to get it to contour correctly so you want your feather fairly straight you don't want it really twisted but you want the feather to kind of profile across the top of the fly Somewhat like that, creating a top and a bottom. It's a really, an, a definitely an optional step, but it does create some good natural uh, contrast. Uh, to back of a fish would be darker. We're gonna tie that straight on the top, with a little gap in the feathers. You can tie this in flat too. I've seen it tied that way, but I like the contour. Makes it smooth that way. And then the same thing with this one. Find the natural curve of the feather. You can accentuate it with a little bit of pulling with your thumb and index finger to get the shape that you want. I'll lay that in there. Cool, that's about the length that I want. Roughly right there. And again, you're gonna put that one slightly off to the left, but on top of the fly again. Not a fly that you want to risk losing in the bottom every other cast. <laughs> a little bit more work compared to some other flies. I'm sure a lot of people can uh, attest to the power of this fly and going through a run um, after doing two or three other flies and kind of a Hail Mary shot right here and often results in a grab. Trim those nice and short. Wrap that. We're not going to worry about cleaning up the head too much because we're going to throw a cone over top of this one. If you do too many wraps, it makes the cone um, struggle to get a good... Uh, it doesn't seat next to the, the Rhea and Marabou as nicely as I would want it. And so, a couple whip finishes. A little dab of... Super glue. And 
And then take your favorite cone color. And slide it on. And then I'm gonna just make sure everything kind of gets pulled up into that glue. Beautiful. That is by far my most <laughs> trustworthy fly um, for Great Lakes Steelhead. So the final step is to massage it off the needle. Trim that pretty short, trim the tube pretty short. Take your lighter and just melt it till it creates a nice little cone in front of the tube. There you go. My uh, tube intruder. It's uh, again the same principle as a regular old intruder uh, with a few little tweaks, but tied on a tube.